Uh, if we want to talk about the bad points, I'm probably going to need about another 10 minutes here because um, I'm about to sound off. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so, Broomy, it's December, December in Melbourne and we're both wearing a beanie. Yeah, just had a look at the uh, temperature before and it's 10 degrees here where I am. Uh, that's for the Seppos, that's 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's the first day of summer. Seppo, in American. Beautiful Melbourne summer's day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> now what we're doing today is, a lot of people probably don't know, this is your daily driver. You've had yeah, it, what, so, um, how long have you had it for? Couple of years now, so people might have seen it in the in the Bowden's video we did at Father's Day for uh, washing your car. I had a fair few people say, "Whose car is it? What's done to it? Um, tell us more about it." What's so done to it? We'll get to that in a second. Mm. Absolutely nothing, and that's the reason why we thought we'd do a video on it because it's an honest opinion of an actual standard car. Because a lot of people say yeah. their car's fantastic, but then you find out it's got X, Y, and Z, and you're like, "Well." Yeah. What is it like standard? That's it. So this is a bog stock Series 1 VF Commodore uh, V8. So it's the Redline Edition. She's the last of the V8! The Redline Edition is basically what most car manufacturers do to just continually innovate and, and push more mm. sales of the same car over and yeah. over again. Yeah. So I think this car over a normal SS, so it's an SSV Redline. So there's an SS so and there's an SSV. Oh, yours doesn't have the sunroof. Some and then the there's sunroof. Redline. Now the wagons don't have the sunroof because of the long roof. Uh, I think the sedans all got a sunroof. sunroof um, yeah. One thing it did get was Brembo front brakes. Series 2 got Brembo front and rear. Nice. I think it's got leather seats and I think that's about it. Um, I think you get a red V on the back of the boot, which is um, critically important. Well, so the, the, SS, the SS Series 1 would have had Brembo's though. Now, you know what? No. It no, didn't. No, the red line. The red line's the only ones that got um, the SS. I think SSV red line are the only ones that have Brembo's. Yours are silver or red? Yeah, silver. Yeah. S oh, so the okay, si silver. series two have got Brembo's front and rear, and they're the red ones. And series one has Brembo's on the front, and they're just um, they're, they're the silver ones, which I don't know what the hell it means. I push the pedal and the car stops. The so biggest I care less. masterpiece of this car is what is under the bonnet. The almighty <laughs> LS engine. <laughs> now this is an L77. I think. I've got no idea. Okay. I'm not an Alice so, guru, and so this there's is so a, many. So the L, L98 is basically a 6 litre, and this is the L77 version, which has the um, the lifter. Displacement on demand? Try and save some fuel, basically. Yep. But it does, actually does nothing. If you look into it, you have to be doing like 1,406 RPM, and you've got a window of 3 RPM on the freeway, and then it'll turn on for one second to turn off. Yeah. Well, it's probably uh, I'm probably in that window a fair bit, because quite honestly, uh, this car gets babied. Uh, I don't think it sees over mm. 1500 RPM 95% of the day because I just drive it to and from work. It's my daily. It is completely standard like you said. That, that's um, a, I found it odd when I go in this car. I'm actually like, I don't get, because I, 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 yeah. I go in so many VFs but they're all obviously loud and modified yeah. and I hop in this and you actually go, is there actually a V8 in there? Yeah, so that, that I think the thing they've realised after they made this and it's meant to be the performance variant um, there's no exhaust note and there's no induction note either. You cannot hear this thing for love nor money. It doesn't mm. matter even if you wring its neck, there's nothing. So the next generation ones, they put the bimodal exhaust, which is probably something that's really lacking from this car. Yeah. I mean, you've bought six litre V8. What's the use of having six litre V8 versus like the three point whatever litre V6s if you cannot hear the fact you've got a V8 under the bonnet and you're wasting, burning all those dollar notes through extra fuel, you probably want to get something in return for that in, in terms of sound and there's nothing here. There's so nothing. And to put to put a, a quality, like a, a full exhaust on one of these, it's not cheap. No, that's right. So a, a, lo a, a cheap, lot of people just do the rear muffler delete yeah. where they just, uh, it's got multiple mufflers and cats in this thing and they just delete the rear mufflers just for a bit of sound. So I definitely want to do something because I'm sick of getting no V8 return from this thing. There's a lot of people actually, when I say this is a V8, they go, they had no idea. They thought it was just the base model because yeah. of how quiet it is, so. So the Series 2 have, for those that don't know, Holden got a, um, you know the drain pipe you get in the laundry that empties your washing machine? <laughs> <laughs> so they got that actual pipe and stuck it on the firewall and it comes into the airbox area and it tries to feed, you know, fake induction noise into the into the car. I've driven them. I didn't really yep. notice that much difference. But the biggest difference is they've got the the bimodal. The bimodal. The, bi the bimodal is great. <laughs> yeah. So friend of ours, Dave. You might say we did supercars talk a couple of episodes earlier this year with with Dave. He's got a uh, Series Two VF uh, SSV Redline sedan. 
and the bimodal and that just it's got a nice note at idle so it, you can hear that that slightly lopy v8 idle and then at cruising it closes and then as soon as you open up the throttle a bit it, it opens up again and I've, I've driven one myself and and they're great the, the system on it just works um when it works it works it works phenomenally well do you know so. how much power it makes no i know nothing about this car i literally know zero about this car you would know more about this car you know, than i would i just know, the, bought it the dumb thing is i actually don't know what half of them make at the engine i just know oh that's a v for a ve it'll make like yeah 225 at the wheels stock yeah that's all i know i actually don't know what it makes at the yeah, i don't know anything the ls3s from yeah, my this. from my experience will make between 230 and anywhere from 220 to 240 at the wheels yep. standard so these probably make a little bit less, being a six litre. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I know nothing about it. And the, the reason I bought this car was simple. I, I needed, I wanted something rear wheel drive. I needed something um, large enough because it's got a family and also to, um, why does it have to be, Why around. does it have to be rear wheel drive? Because it seems the four wheel drives don't have enough. And I'll get to this point is the towing capacity. So yeah. I needed, at that point, I didn't have the F350 on the horizon. I needed to tow my race cars with and in the end, uh, I had a territory, so I had a 2010 or 12 or whatever territory, the last of the model territories, natural aspirated Barra. Barramundi, lovely. Um, and it towed okay, it was fine, but it was starting to get pretty long in the tooth, interior wise and, and technology wise, it was pretty dated. Um, so I wanted something new and I was willing to look at any any model, any yeah. any engine combination that could actually tow, that was in my budget of around that mid $40,000 mark. And this was it. Mm. This was literally the only car that could have that that could have that low two-ton um, payload towing capacity that had a performance variant of an engine. Yeah. I didn't want a diesel truck. Yeah. I didn't want a Trident or a Ranger or whatever. I, I, I'm not I, don't, a I don't know how people drive them every I day. I don't want a tradie truck. I drove a D40 yeah. Navara for about six months. I remember you had the black one. Wasn't it black? Oh, white one, yeah. Wrong, wrong, that wrong. Oh, was it yeah, white? So I, I drove a D40 Navara for about six months. And I reckon my lower back is still paying for it. The, the, the seats in that thing were like a bloody school portable. It was the, the worst car to drive, big throttle lag and stuff. So um, I I'd, I'd just had the worst experience with those. At least something like this, that, so. it breaks half okay. It yeah. just goes around a corner half okay. Yeah. And these these were such a better model than the VE. Like oh fit yeah. And so in inside, um, they they may look from you know from the A pillar back, they may look like a VE. What's inside is the reason why I didn't even consider a VE because the VE was, when did the VE start, 2008 Eight, or earlier? Yeah, yeah, 2007 so, maybe. Um, that model variant for VE ran through three generations and they basically didn't update anything inside. And this was a ground up rebuild and it's the biggest thing this thing has over the Falcon. So people always say, oh, you could have just bought a, a, a Barra or a sedan or whatever. First of all, no sedans. Yeah. Um, you cannot fit anything in the boot no. of a sedan compared to a wagon. And what, what Ford wagon comes in a performance variant? Yeah. But the cream will rise to the top, oh yeah. Exactly. So, and people, I know that people will definitely be saying, you just turbo the barra. <laughs> no, 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 this is my daily driver. Stock. You don't just go yeah. and fiddle around with engineering cars and putting turbo engines and that. It, this is standard. This is what this is, you know, maybe you put an intake on it, maybe you put an exhaust, but that's it. I'm not bugging around with um, re-engineering the world just for a bit of bit of performance. The gain, only downside so. to it is, you know, when you follow them from the back, yeah. it just looks they like a VE. They still look like a VE, yeah. The, so the yeah. Series 2, they put the LED lights on, they look really they cool do look just a lot to show the that is a different variant model. Inside is where this, this takes the cake over the Falcons, and the Falcons really, up, even the FGX, I mean, I think they changed the screen to a little bit colour, but it was if you, very if you, if you, VA. <laughs> Spec if you hop in an along. FGX and then hop in an EB, yeah. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of difference. Actually, the EB is probably nicer. They've got those nice plush yeah. soft seats. You have stolen my dreams. My first car was a bench seat EA. New Ford Falcon. Simply stunning. Classic car that was. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing, nothing to crow about under the bonnet here. It's totally, totally stock, totally standard. I guess we can go over some of the good points about my experience, specifically with this car, have been. Um, and the reason why I think this is good is because there's so many people might say, yeah, I had a VF and it was no good, but then you find out later they've changed 10 different things on it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you can't really say it's a crap car when it's modified. Yeah, or people say, oh, that's a great car and they've never actually owned them. There's yeah. so many people in the oh, car yeah. community like that, like yeah. people that will defend a car till no end and it's like, oh yeah, 
what one did you want? Oh, I don't, but uh, I know someone that did need My mate's so. cousin's brother had one. Okay, yeah. your opinion means zero. So, um, I mean, yeah, it could so be out here reviewing like it like So, most Holdens Bondi. and Fords, did, have you got both headlights and taillights working on this? Uh, well, I don't know. I drive the car, so someone else will have to tell me that. But I'm pretty sure this isn't an AU Falcon, so the, so the brake lights definitely work. Um, uh, the everything handles, else, the door handles work. The door handles work. It's yeah. not an, it's not an XD Falcon, so the door handles all work. So all the all the stuff, all the panel gaps and everything line up, and all that stuff's right. The body fitment seems seems fine. I've, I don't have any air leaks or anything. So from that end, it's fine. But as someone who washes their car on a weekly basis, yeah, you did the right choice buying white. <laughs> yeah, it is. Your territory was like. Yeah, I, did, I wasn't sure if it was black or just it was white and it was It was dirty. a permanent dirt colour. <laughs> um, <laughs> shade of dirt. Because <laughs> so where, where you live and, and drive to, yeah, you're driving on a lot of... Uh, yeah, back then when I lived at Mern, there was a lot of construction there and you'd drive the car, you'd wash the car, then a day later the car would look like it never been washed. So in the end, I just chose not to wash so the car that So getting back so. to it, what, what are the good points? The good points of this is that it's a wagon. It's got an Alice in it. Because well, I can't hear it, I don't the, count that as a You good opened point the bonnet before, and I think you said this is the second time I've opened it. In it, it was, two, I, think two or three years. I think it's about the second time. We, we found some scraps on the bonnet here from where a possum, I think, have come in and eaten eat an apple on the, on the top of the bonnet. So I don't, I wouldn't even know if it's, it hasn't even got a performance air filter or anything. So it's, it, there's nothing. I've never, this literally, I've owned the car for two and a bit years, and the second time I opened the bonnet. So yes, it's got the V8, but I, I, I believe just the day-to-day -day stuff the Barra put out as much torque as this did in the yeah, RPM range yeah. that I use so the engine's mm -hmm. not a positive the main thing is it's a wagon and the seats are comfortable and that and the entertainment system inside works really well so only only downside of the entertainment system is it didn't evolve as well as probably some of the Euro cars as quick so it doesn't have like Apple CarPlay and things like that which is disappointing now in now, 2019 yeah. where stuff like that's really important. So what, what year is this? Um, it was first registered in 2000 early 2015 yeah. so so it's not and that it's, old. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not mega but old. But saying that though, the infotainment system stuff does change pretty quick Yeah. in cars. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a big influencing decision on people who are purchasing cars. I, I know I talk to people that aren't car people, and the number one thing they rave on about in their cars that are newer is Apple CarPlay or whatever. They don't care about the car or anything like that. It's all about the technology. So, you know, that people wonder why Holden, um, you know, they don't make vehicles in this country anymore. Ford and Holden were just decades behind in this stuff compared to the Euros and the Japs, you know, and the Korean cars coming out, like the Kia Stinger, you know, it was basically a $60,000 car with a hundred plus thousand dollar BMW tech in it. Um, you know, you, you compare it to this at that same day and age and it's miles, miles behind. Um, it's not it just because a, there is no thong slapper. So no, no, it hasn't got a 253 in it, thank God. Hang on. So there wasn't that many good points. No. That you'd no, say. Th this was I, I didn't buy this because it was a uh, SSV redliner yeah. and I had to have one. I bought this because it ticked boxes that I needed yeah. to tow and I wanted sort and of had a room. performance variant engine yeah. and, it, and it's a wagon and it had well, room. So. Another thing was when you bought it, the idea was it could potentially become a project car. Yeah. And it still can. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason you can't put some kind of um, exhaust on it and, you know, a, a decent air intake or whatever, but... A couple of turbos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no turbos. I mean, supercharger, maybe not out of the realms, but what about um, if we put a barrel in it? It's, it's money that I don't want to invest in 100%, this thing yeah. um, because, like I said, the car's starting to get a bit older now. Um, and now that I've got the F350, there's one important variant I don't have to worry about the next car I buy, and mm. that's towing. So, not having to worry about towing opens up um, the market pretty wide. Uh, so, we're well, not having to tow race cars, still might need a trailer, but. Um, yeah, I guess that's some of the good points of it. Uh, if we want to talk about the bad points, I'm probably going to need about another 10 minutes here because um, I'm about to sound off. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> on. I'm the biggest LS fan in the world. You, you can't possibly anything be wrong with this. <laughs> <laughs> this part of it's been pretty reliable. Uh, everything else bolted to it, we've had issues. So let's wind back the clock to the day I got the car. And as far as I'm aware, when you buy a vehicle, it comes with a roadworthy certificate. And that roadworthy, well, some of those conditions have a uh, minimum wears, like in your brake pads and things like that. I did 600 Ks in this car when I first got it, and the brakes started squealing like crazy. I was like, geez, that's a weird noise. There's, there's something wrong with it. Took the rear wheel off, and there was less than a millimeter left on the rear brake pads. Now, I'm, I'm no mechanic. However, I'm pretty sure that, 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 that should have failed the roadworthy. No, that's roadworthy. And, yeah, and, and 
it's clear that they just wanted to get rid of the car yeah. and just sell it. So That's not the LS's fault. That's not the LS's fault, but it is Holden's fault. You know, so this come from a Holden dealer. Yeah, this, is, this isn't from uh, Dodgy Brothers, um, uh, I can't mention names, <laughs> but this isn't from some sketchy, yeah. sketchy uh, car yard. This is from it's, the manufacturer. This come from a Holden dealer, and the Holden dealer supplied the road with it, and the Holden dealerships have exclusively serviced this car over the life that I've had the vehicle, because again, another great point, uh, it come with an extended warranty. However, I was then locked into that uh, dealer network's uh, dealership to get the car service to maintain the extended warranty and lucky I did because in the period I've owned the car in the last couple of years it's had uh, two steering racks replaced, a wheel bearing replaced, uh, the brakes they replaced the rears they realized they, they yes they, they had uh, had an oversight when they'd uh, delivered the car. Um, the HVAC systems had to be reflashed uh, a few times, the wiper blade jets, uh, the washer bottle has just the host of the, from the washer bottle has blown off three times now. Ellis, the world just just for today. If it wasn't an Ellis in this thing, it'd be for the tip. And um, the air conditioning system was junk. And and our biggest gripe with that is I took it to a Holden dealer and told them there is a problem with the air conditioning system. I think one of the hoses has got a leak. Can you get onto it ASAP that morning so we can sort it out by the evening? They rang me at three o'clock that afternoon and said, Oh, we haven't started on the car yet. Uh, what we can do is just fill the system and give it a service. And if it leaks out, it leaks out. I said, how much is that gonna cost? Oh, $350. I said, no problem. So you just want me to flush $350 through the car and just, it's gonna be useless by the weekend. And they're like, oh yeah, it might fix it. It might not. And lo and behold, of course it didn't. Uh, I took it to a different dealership uh, the next time and they were really good about it and said, yeah, they've definitely you know, made an error. Uh, and they replaced the two hoses under, under the extended warranty. But that extended warranty is over now. And I guarantee you one place I won't be going back to service the car ever, and that's Holden. Um, and for me, that's you know, one of the prime reasons why this mob just doesn't manufacture cars in Australia anymore. Because I'm not the only person that says it, but I think their after sale service is just junk. And I would not buy another Holden at all, at all, never again. Never again. So I had, the, I had the territory for five, six years, and uh, I had very few faults with it. But um, every time I went to Ford, it was just service was done, looked after really well, um, and there's just been nothing. I, I can't get over when you told me about the extended warrant, because I, I think you mentioned to me where you were taking it. I'm like, yeah. that's Broomie, that's on the other side of town for you. Why don't yeah. you just take it down here down oh, the road? And then I couldn't understand if you have an extended warrant, so you're paying them and then yeah. you can't take that to any Holden dealer. Yeah, it's extreme rot and the, that is insane. I started supplying my own oil because they were just the the, the costs involved of their of their service were just astronomical versus taking it to an independent dealer. Um, and so yeah, I just I never have to go there again and I'm quite happy with that. So um, they're all the, they're all the bad points, but uh, let's have a look at some of the other stuff the reason why I bought it. So we've got a decent entertainment system here and obviously the wagon so you've got a fair bit of space in this old rig. As you can see, you know, if you'd have a sedan, you'd be cooked. Looks Pass like, you've, looks like you've never, never put anything in here. It's, uh, it's <laughs> what is that smell? What smell? Didn't you have all the F-truck wheels in here the other day? I did. Uh, so this can carry uh, seven F-truck rims with tyres on it. So decent load carrying capacity uh, in this thing. But yeah, it's uh, it's copped a fair bit of use. Yeah, some nice gloves there, just give it. It's copped a fair bit of use. They're my Mishimoto gloves. These are killer. They've got knuckle protectors and a little magnet here too. Um, how good is that? What an idea. Never seen these before or heard about anything like that. Um, but yeah, these are my these are my heavy duty rigging gloves. Um, so that's that's all that. If you come over the entertainment system and this is where this this is what sort of sets it apart compared to um, a a Ford or a Falcon, which is the most comparable rival in that, is this whole this whole system here is is just so much better than you would find in a in a Falcon, in my opinion. I know some people are probably going to say, oh, they're going to this and that, whatever. That's your opinion. That's great. My opinion is, in here in this cabin, uh, is so much so much nicer than any Falcon um, they ever made. So this is pretty much it. It's you know it's got your bare basics, climate control, satellite navigation, um, and whatnot. Um, steering wheel controls, it's got lane assist, it's got park assist, it's got uh, lane departure and all that kind of stuff. So it's got some technology in it, heads but up, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it's got heads up display. Yep. Yeah, it's got all well, that. Well, yeah, heads up is not a bad feature. 
Yeah, so you drive a car with that heads up display and, and you and you realise how much you miss it sort of thing. So um, heads up display is really good, but um, this button here is for traction control, you turn that off. And I would then, never have done that before. And then LS that, limiter. I would never do that. That is um that would be illegal. Can we do an LS limiter? We, no, we can't. <laughs> I'd probably shit a lifter or something, knowing my luck with this at the moment. So um Is there anything else wrong with it at the moment? Well, we just saw now, we popped the bonnet and we saw that top radio hose was completely sucked in. So I, I, I can only imagine that that's because it's sucking air in from somewhere because the recovery system, siphon system, isn't working maybe yeah, properly this, or something. That's so, not the LS's fault. Well, it's connected to the LS, so I'm blaming the LS. Um, what about the brakes? You said they were getting a bit low, but that's just Yeah, so one of the other things is it, it got... It, last time we got serviced by Holden, um, the brakes were mint, get it serviced by Holden, and then the steering wheel basically just shudders ever since then. So I don't think these discs really like being machined that, all that much. Um, they must have machined the discs. It wasn't on the invoice or anything, but um, car went in, was braking and, and not and fine, and then car come out and it was shuddering through the steering wheel pretty badly. So is, at 80 is, k's yeah, now, if I brake, yeah. I can feel that the steering wheel basically does that. So these front brakes and pads are cooked. Um, I'm not going to put OE ones in it. I'll put something decent like um, Bendix or something like that. I'll look up to see what, what they make and I'll, and I'll chuck them on there instead because uh, these are actually, these brakes are pretty noisy. Brembo's I think are pretty notorious for it. If it's a bit of water, a bit of moisture, mm. um, they, they start being really squealy. So put a decent, um, decent brake manufacturer on the front and see if, uh, so what performance is like then. The last thing we'll touch on now is probably the most controversial thing on just about you go on any internet forum or any car club Facebook page. One of the number one things people always argue about is fuel economy. My car gets this fuel economy, my car gets that. How many litres do you get per tank? Like yada, 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 whatever. So I can just tell you what real world fuel economy figures I get out of this. And I do, it's probably 50-50 split between some freeway driving and some urban driving or whatever, some, some city driving, and I get 13.8 litres per 100 k's. Um, I get that before I, I did no freeway driving, and this is where this thing is horrendous. Uh, so it, it was originally around 16.5 litres per 100 k's where I lived out in, out in the northern suburbs and there was no freeway driving. What I would find is that when I was towing my race car, I'd tow Project Redline with this, and it would still get 16 and a half liters on the freeway. So I would tow another two ton behind it and it would still get 16 and a half liters yeah. per 100 Ks. This is how, if you are going to get one of these and look at the fuel economy figures and see that they're in their mid 13s or whatever um, combined or, or less, I think, because on the freeway unloaded, I think they get in, in the, you know, in the nines or the high eights. Um, but my combined figure is about 13.8. If you're buying one of these and you only do city Ks and you do no freeway driving, I'm telling you now, you're going to get somewhere in the 16s. And I know there's going to be people in the comments blowing no, up over that. Rubbish. Blowing up over my, it. But I've, my brother's got one. My imaginary brother who's filming. Um, he gets 10.5. Yeah. So, um, sorry. They do, ha, I said, sorry to interrupt you. They do improve with a tune. Yeah. They yeah, they, they, you'll they, probably get a liter. I've I've heard that over you get about a liter per hundred k's yeah. with a tune that, but this is bog standard, totally but, standard. But even if even if someone in the comments says that's rubbish, I get eleven point one. You might, but you're not doing the exact same driving, say, as Brumi. Yeah. Like you can't really. Yeah. This is just your experience. Yeah, this is, and, and that's what I'm saying. This this is exactly my experience of of before it was out from out in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, it was a lot of stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Mm. And I was getting mid 16s and that's just the reality. That's what it was. Um, and now I've, I've moved and I do 50, 50 driving between a bit of stop, start. Um, it's much more flowing traffic than I get on the freeway and do a fair few Ks and, and that's all I really do. But all this driving too, don't forget, there's no spirited driving. This is, yeah. this thing's not even seeing over 2000 RPM. So for so this thing no, to see no over 2000 RPM. Yeah. No, no neutralized limiters. No. And, <laughs> Definitely none of that stuff. And the Barra, so the territory I drove for six years, um, that's with driving, similar kind of driving, so not, not as much freeway driving, but um, I did a little bit more freeway driving in that thing. That averaged in the uh, low 12s. So I know Barra owners probably blowing up over that as well, but um, sorry, mm. hurt feelings, but that was just reality of the driving I was doing. That, that, that con consistently over the six years, did in the mid 12s. A big car, territory is, you know, heavy, heavy. Nearly as um, bad as nearly as bad as my thing, Subaru. But <laughs> sounds uh, just as bad too. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I know it's a, it's probably not the Doug DeMuro style um, sort of wrap up. Time to give it a Doug score. But it's probably 10 times better than Supercar Blondie, but anyway. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's real world. This has been my experience and yeah, I don't know. If I was to replace this car, what, what should I get? Put, put down something in the comments. So I still want performance variant engine. Um, it still has to be able to tow yeah. um, maybe at 1,500 kilos. Yeah. So if I want to put a dual axle small trailer and lug around some timber or whatever on the back, it still needs to do that. Um, it needs to have four doors and it needs to have some kind of lift back or wagon. No sedans at all. So for mine, I am, I am keen on replacing this car what probably about? within the next six months. I know what I want. I'm just waiting on to see if Kia make it. Um, I'm waiting to see if they make that second generation Stinger because I'm not really keen on ever buying a model variant that they do one generation of yeah. and they disappear. You've seen a lot of Holdens with it. It's um, so a Holden Epica I, or I'd something be, that was I'd around for fit. about yeah. three minutes. I mean, imagine buying one of those and trying to mm. sell it to someone. No I'd chance. be very surprised if, if another Stinger happens. Yeah. So they just haven't sold enough of them. I don't, I don't know of any other car around that sort of fits the model like the Stinger does for me in, in terms of what I want. So I don't, I don't know, a performancey sort of engine. So a turbo six or a, or a, or a V8, four doors, lift back or a wagon, um, and can tow 1,500, yeah. 1,600 kilos. I mean, it's, I've, I've, I've looked when I first bought this and the, the Stinger and this were sort of the only ones. And I went for this because it could tow over to Tonne Ridge because I needed to tow a car. And that's the reason mm. I didn't originally go for a Stinger, but Jeez, I don't know. Maybe an Alice converted RX-8. Might Maybe be not. a bit hard to get the kids in the back. <laughs> True, it's got four doors. <laughs> One's about this big. It's got three doors maybe. Suicide two and three doors. Two and a quarter on each side, so. Um, yeah, probably not. I don't think it'd tow too well. Um, might ring its head off, but uh, people out there probably know I'm not a new car sort of buff, so people out there probably know better than I do. Mm -hmm. uh, remember this is Australia, so don't start just dropping down names of cars that don't exist like a GMC Sierra or something. We don't have those here. Um, Australian Suburban. <laughs> suburban. We it's suburban. Park that everywhere. Maybe we could just stop by a Ram, Dodge Ram. I don't think that'd get between uh, down the side of my, my house without wiping half the uh, corner of the house off. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this, to be honest, and this is the problem with the car scene now. It's yeah. in the new car, new car field, I should say. It's just boring. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine ever buying a Mitsubishi these days? Like, you know when the was the last time they made anything? Their sales are actually up this year, yeah. and all they sell is like three SUVs and a Ute. Yeah. It's That's because it. people have just been conditioned to yeah. buy vanilla, boring cars. Yeah. You know, so, but, yep, I think we'll leave it there. We're and yeah, here. people have got uh, any suggestions, um, we're going to escape this lovely Melbourne weather. Leave them in the comments, and until next time, we'll uh, catch you then. That was the world. <laughs>